Okay, so there is this tiny space company based in New Zealand. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Ignition. In fact, it's doing really well. This is Mission Control Auckland. As you're uh, watching here on the video stream, we've got confirmation of payload deploy orbit insertion, which wraps up the initial part of our mission with a successful insertion into orbit. Rocket Lab is this tiny space company that launches tiny rockets. How tiny? Well, it's not tiny comparing to humans, but it's pretty tiny in the world of rockets. Its electron rocket, which is incidentally its only rocket, stands at 17 meters tall, which is around 50 feet. The most comparable rocket I can think of right now is the Falcon 1 standing at 22 meters tall. Not only are both rockets comparable in size, they're comparable in performance too. Here, let me show you side by side. As I said, the electron rocket is 17 meters tall and 1.2 meters in diameter. In comparison, the Falcon 1 is 21.3 meters tall and 1.7 meters in diameter. And in terms of the performance of both vehicles, the Electron rocket can send 150 kg of payload to the low Earth orbit, and that number for Falcon 1 is 180 kg. The proposed maximum payload to low Earth orbit is 225 kg for the Electron rocket and 670 kg for the Falcon 1. However, the engine capability is pretty different on both vehicles. On Falcon 1, its first stage is equipped with one Merlin engine, which produces a thrust of 454 kilonewton, whereas on the Electron, it's equipped with nine Rutherford engines, which produces a thrust of 18 kilonewton each and 192 kilonewton in total. So it's not hard to see that the power of the Electron rocket, although comparable, is not as capable as the Falcon 1. So what's the deal with Rocket Lab then? It's not as capable as Falcon 1. It's 10 years too late. How can this then be a viable business at all? Well, let me dive a little bit deeper. Rocket Lab is a for-profit VC-backed engineering firm, which basically means one thing. Rocket Lab is the result of a business decision. People at Rocket Lab are not stupid, nor are its investors. Therefore, Making money sometimes in the future is definitely on the schedule. The only uncertain part is how. How can Rocket Lab make money despite of having a rocket that is not even as capable as the decommissioned SpaceX Falcon 1? So this is the tricky part to explain. The short answer is, the demand for smaller satellites have reason. The longer version is, over the years technology has evolved to the extent that smaller rockets can perform a lot more tasks than they used to. Therefore, many cost-sensitive institutions are looking for a cheaper way to send out their smaller payloads. The price balloon for Rocket Lab is advertised at $4.9 million. In the first successful mission, Rocket Lab launched four smaller rockets into the low Earth orbit. Therefore, each of them costs just over a million dollars, which is a pretty good deal for small satellite launches. Furthermore, as noticed by SciFi.com, another advantage of Rocket Lab is a small satellite on a big rocket is generally a secondary payload, which complicates matters. You may not get the exact orbit you want, and you have to wait for the primate mission to get everything ready before you can launch. With the Electron, those aren't an issue. Moreover, since the Electron rocket is really small, its launch and manufacturing cadence can be much higher, maybe even 100 launches per year. There are advantages of Rocket Lab over bigger companies like SpaceX. In that sense, Rocket Lab to SpaceX is like Xiaomi to iPhone. Since iPhone is not making a $200 smartphone, Xiaomi can do it. So the only question left is, how big is the small satellite market? And is it big enough for Rocket Lab to survive or maybe even thrive? Well, just like SpaceX, Rocket Lab is also eyeing on two separate markets, the commercial launch market as well as the government contract market. For the private commercial launch market, my take is that it's a super viable business for Rocket Lab, especially considering the fact that it's the only company demonstrated lower Earth orbit launch capabilities other than SpaceX in the micro launcher market. According to PwC, 
The micro launcher market is worth between 180 million to 400 million euro with more than 160 launches every year. It is important to notice that there were less than 40 launches per year in 2011. And this is why SpaceX gave up Falcon 1 back in 2008. The market was simply too small at that time. In the government contract market, Rocket Lab is in good hands too. It has a good relationship with Lockheed Martin and Iradian Satellite. Lockheed Martin is one of its investors and the COO of Iradian Satellite is sitting on the board of Rocket Lab. With their help, Rocket Lab received US government's contract to study low-cost space launcher to place nano satellites into orbit. Overall, I think the recent success of Rocket Lab is formidable and it has found a great niche to make itself relevant. So congratulations to the team at Rocket Lab. I look forward to more great launches in the future. Hey guys, thank you for watching. As always, I want to appreciate all your support, especially those of you who asked me to make this video on Twitter. Leave me a comment down below if you're one of them. For the rest of you, if you have awesome video ideas like this, tweet me at Lay Creatives and let me know. Again, this is Lay. I'll catch you guys later. <laughs>